Hello, it's Dr. Scott McLean. During this video, we'll be talking about the on one components. So this is the secret help file. So we'll be talking about the restorative options once you place this abutment. So during surgery, the tie ultra implant will be placed, which is a conical connection implant. And then the muco integration of the abutment allows for you then to do some restorative options. So the focus here is all about that. So number one, you could do an IOS, so an intraoral scan healing abutment. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Also the titanium cylinder, the healing cap, and then third, the universal base, which is where we'll make the final crown. Then of course you can use an aesthetic abutment. So these are all provided by the manufacturer and you can choose what you're gonna use, but we'll kind of show you some of the things I've been doing with this abutment. So you can do an iOS workflow or a conventional workflow, and we'll talk a little bit about both of these to allow you to really understand this. And so you might want to revisit this when you're doing your first couple cases. So during the iOS workflow, what we'll do is the surgeon's going to have an intraoral scan abutment placed at the time of surgery. So the patient's going to wear this, and they'll come into your office or the surgeon themselves would take a scan. So this is about the simplest way you could possibly do it. You scan it, send it to the lab, then the lab is going to make a screwmentable crown. And the screwmentable crown then gets put in place. So here's my actual own abutment. You can see in my posterior area. And I'm doing a scan with my Medit scanner. And the Medit scanner allows me to come around, pick up that um, iOS scanning abutment. So you don't need to have any other abutments. So you need to have an intraoral scanner, but the beauty of this is it allows you to just do it. You know, you, you don't have to do a lot of thinking. So you'll get this scan of the abutment. You send that to the lab, tell the lab the size of the abutment itself, plus the height of the iOS scan body, and then they'll be able to make you a final crown, which will enable you to really manufacture something very quick and easy. So it's a super way to do this from a, you know, kind of scan, get it done fast. Now I'll just push a button and send it to the lab. You can see here the technician is using DTX Studio Lab to start to design the final crown. So we want this to be articulating properly so the lab technician can kind of move this around. You can see a non-working interference here and they're able to reduce the lower buckle cusp which is necessary here to maintain the centric vertical dimension of occlusion. So you're able to do some sophisticated things. One thing you should know is you cannot do angulated screw channels with this type of product. So I prefer to be fully guided on these type of implants. So I have that channel exactly where I want to go. So you can see here the channels coming out exactly where it needs to go, right up the central fossa and uh, makes a very nice product. So we're going to make a screwmentable crown in this particular case so we can check the occlusion and make sure that everything is looking good. So the technician is going to make this piece of zirconia which will be then uh, cemented on top of the universal base. And my preference for the universal base is the 0.3 millimeter so that I can uh, use my kind of space, uh, the restorative space, very kind of carefully.
Now what we'll do is to snap an on one replica into the plastic model and uh, you can see then that uh, we're able to put the uh, base abutment on top of this. And then you can uh, have your lab do any kind of zirconia crown here. I think that's the preferred way to do this. And um, I'm placing things on my Instagram account. So if you take a little snap picture of this, you'll get that. Now currently you're able to do the on one abutment on the Nobel Active, the Nobel Parallel, and also the Nobel Replace, all the conical connection uh, type of implants. So these are the Thai Ultra implants. And the reason why is we want this Thai Ultra Zeal uh, kind of seal. So this is that muco integration. And then the universal base abutment is going to fit down on top of this. And the way I use is a screw mantable crown where the zirconia crown is going to be cemented on the lab bench. And then you screw it in place at about 35 Newton centimeters. So the conventional workflow is uh, very kind of um, familiar for most dentists. The implant would go in, the abutment would go on at the time of surgery. The surgeon would either place A, a healing cap, or B, a temporary crown with a cylinder. So this would be usually an acrylic crown. And then you come back after your healing time and do either a closed tray or an open tray impression. So I prefer the open tray. I just think that this works best in my hands. And then you'd make a screwmentable crown. So the same kind of end point that you'd have on the digital is to have this kind of screwmentable crown so you're not getting cement down around that flat area because often these tissues are scalloped and if uh, cement gets down around the scalloped area it could cause a problem so I like to have it cemented on the lab bench and then go into the mouth and do the screwmentable crown so I like to use the 0.3 rather than the 1.25 just because I can minimize the amount of restorative space that I'm using each doctor is going to have their own preference and uh, I would appreciate that so this can be uh, easily made so that you can go to the mouth and do your standard procedures. You take your healing cap off and then start to place your implant back into position. So here's my own on one abutment and you can see that there's uh, you know, this is after a little while of healing. And what you'll notice is that the on one abutment is in this position on the x-ray. And um, you can see that on top of this is we have a healing cap. So 2.5, I think, millimeter healing cap. So the blue arrow shows the healing cap. The yellow arrow, arrow shows the on one abutment. And when this is uh, being x-rayed, you can see how beautiful the bone is. The red arrow shows the problem I had. Uh, we actually cut the contact when we were doing the before and after scans and stuff. So I had to go back and add porcelain in there. But look at the bone on this uh, particular implant and how beautiful it is over this wide platform Nobel parallel implant. And at 18 months, the bone has had zero bone loss. And so this is what we want on our implants. So the muco integration and the osseo integration have protected this implant over time now. So at 2.5 years, I'm actually gonna take the crown off and have a look underneath just before I was doing a presentation. And I wanted to fix that crown. And so I have that fixed now. But what you'll see is that when I had this uh, taken out, that the bone is still perfect. It's amazing because we're not going back down to the bone level. So what you're doing in, on the conventional workflow is you're taking a standard impression coping that's an on-one impression coping. You'll put that into position, screw that down, finger tighten it, and then do your uh, open tray impression coping. So you'd open your tray, go in, or do your closed tray. But we're doing a tissue level impression. So not level with the tissue, but it's in the tissue. So this is where we would use uh, a screwmentable crown. So you come back in and position this because there's an engaging hex here. It's a star, actually. And so the star allows you to position the implant, and then you're going to tighten it down to 35 newtons. So you'd hand tighten it into position. You can see all the margins are going to be kind of uh, below tissue. And so this is the beauty of using the 1.75 millimeter abutment. Because if you have your implant at the right depth, it means that you're going to have a tissue seal around the implant, which starts right at the day of surgery. And so within 48 hours, you're getting this beautiful seal, according to some of the literature I've read. And so the beauty of it is that that's going to seal the body very quickly and then we don't go back in there. So surgeons would like this. 
So you can see down inside a lot of amalgams here, but you can see the screw. We're going to check torque the screw, make sure it's good after we're taking things on and off. Then we go back in and we also put the crown on and tighten the crown to 35 newtons. And so very simple what we're all used to. You can see that the uh, position of the um, screwdriver is, uh, is going to be very accurate, but I like to do these cases guided so I can get this into the exact position. As I said, you can't do an angulated screw channel here, so you need to have that screw channel exactly where you want it to do it. Now you can also do bridges with this, but um, oh, we'll show you this. This is the Teflon, so sterile Teflon. We put it through sterilization and then put it back into the channel, and you don't need very much of this, but we want to prevent the uh, implant from having too much uh, restoration ever going into the screw. So you tuck this in and keep it kind of dry, but realizing that like there's never bacteria coming through this access channel because there's just no way it can get from the abutment into uh, the implant area of the bone. It's just not possible. The bacteria are too big to get into this conical connection. And so the bacteria are not able to get in there and penetrate. So we'll put this in, put some restorative material in. I like to use bulk fill usually now from uh, 3M because it's a nice dense material. So that makes sense to me to have you know, a lot of filler in that because it's gonna take a pounding in here. If you're doing a bridge, you're gonna go with a non-engaging impression coping, also non-engaging abutments. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a little short mini uh, kind of show to show you how to use this abutment.